I'm Brendan Walker. I'm an experimental engineer and I want to celebrate the innovators that took us from the hardships of the 40s to the prosperity of the 60s. This is the story of how science transformed an exhausted country into a nation brimming with confidence. And it starts here in the home. The final part of the jigsaw is this seat here, which attaches to the end of the seesaw. And so our rider is riding the circular motion up and down. Now, if I insert a little bit of power, you can see what happens. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't quite work like that, but... There you go. Should we get on? OK. <laughs> That's super bouncy. That's just springing back into shape. Wonder foam of the future. It's good. I like it. Maybe even watch some telly. So this is the type of rig they use. We've got aviation fuel here, which is flowing all the way through the pipes. We've got liquid nitrogen cooling it down to the same kind of temperatures that are experienced at high altitude. And then we're also injecting a small amount of water, which represents the water that exists naturally in aviation fuel. All that's flowing all the way through here. Remember that old Anderson shelter? Well, it's gone. We've got the start of a patio here. And down here, these stones are going to go around the patio and become a lovely rockery feature. How big's your rockery? Let's see, the patio is probably about three by four metres, about the size of two bodies. And then two there's bodies? A, and then there's a That's rockery nice. around this. That's nice, yeah. yeah. Have you had it long? <laughs> <laughs> oh, ever since Auntie Mabel and Uncle yeah, Henry passed disappeared. Away. Okay. Yeah. When an aircraft's engine is operating at full capacity, those blades can be spinning at almost the speed of sound. They're going to be sucking in vast quantities of air, and with that, perhaps a bird. And if that strikes one of those blades, it could shatter. And now we've got shrapnel and bird travelling down the engine, and if that hits the turbine, it could be damaged, and you've lost an engine. Oh, it's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Here we've got... Uh, improvements in coffins for indicating the burial alive of persons in a trance. You know, it happens so often, you know, you get buried alive, you're having a nap, get buried alive, you wake up, ooh, I'm in a coffin. You've got to have a way of getting out. So, the higher the risks you take, the more likely you are to become a successful hunter and also perhaps more attractive to a potential mate. I like that. I'm, well, I'm in can, that category, I think. It kind of sounds like a good way to be. Yeah, I think so. But, the higher the risks you take, the more likely you are to get eaten. How long would it take to beat a rug like this? Until you've no dust left. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm already getting dusty. It must have been a horrible job. Awful job, awful yeah. job, yes. And tiring? But the men never did that. <laughs> I'm, I'm liberated. I'm, I'm a modern of man, Irish. Of course you are, of course you are. <laughs> Here in the centre of the room, we've got a marble fireplace. Yeah. It's a massive piece of marble. You know, it's huge. way over two metres yeah. wide. Yeah. And it's got to cost tens of thousands of pounds. We need to recreate this, but obviously not as expensive. I mean, are there, are there ways we can do that? Yes, absolutely. Use timber mouldings. Yeah. And then have it marbled. Marbled? Yeah. Is that a technique, is it? Their engines failed because of volcanic ash. Earlier that day, Mount Gulungun, southeast of Jakarta, had erupted with the volcanic ash plume being blown into the plane's flight path with these tiny stone particles sandblasting the aircraft's exterior and choking the engines. Thanks to James Young, we can extract all manner of useful things from crude oil, including the magic ingredient used to make safe household paint. All I need now is a, an oil refinery. They just love this kind of undeveloped land around airports, especially if it's wet or marshy. And airports have to employ birdmen specifically to patrol the takeoff and landing zones. The European manufacturer opted for economy of scale, a monster that could carry more passengers than ever before. Enter the largest passenger jet in the world, the A380. It's huge! You know, what this transistor is doing is something quite simple but really revolutionary. It really is one of the greatest inventions of the 20th century. And to put it into perspective, if you wanted to make one of these without a transistor, you'd have to make it 500 times the size of the Empire State Building. Lots of food was seasonal. Even something we take for granted today, like chicken, was a luxury back then. Because the journey from farm to plate had to be done quickly to keep the food fresh. And that cost money. 
This one in particular is the twin-engine Mosquito fighter bomber, and it was one of the fastest propeller-driven planes in the Second World War. And the secret of its success lay in its construction. It was made from bendy wood and glue. Welcome to the 50s. Where's the volume? There isn't any volume. Afternoon. It's almost time for the coronation, so I'll leave you to tune it in, and I'll go make us a nice pot of tea. I'd like to thank Hadrian and Jim. It's quite an emotional moment for me uh, to have produced this fantastic piece of work. Um, I'm going to treasure it forever. Uh, hopefully, we can do justice on the electric horse with this. Thank you.